Right, so this is the second part of the lecture. So after learning about how, uh, how people forming impression on, uh, about others, so now we're going to learn about social schemas. Yeah. So this is the simplest unit in our cognition processes. And we often, and I often, uh, um, make an analogy uh, to make it more understandable to, uh, to students is that associating schemas with, uh, with container box. Yeah. Uh, so you can imagine uh, uh, what happens in your room, yeah, in your personal room. There are many, many um, stops there. And you need to make your room uh, uh, to be organized so that you would uh, find any uh, any material that you that you need. Yeah, for example, you will keep all your clothes inside a cupboard, and then you will keep all your books in uh, in your in, in a special uh, in a special place in your in your room so that it would be easily it would be easily found when you need it. So social schema works. Uh, like that, yeah, it gives you a sense. It, it gives you uh, the idea of organizing information according to its attributes, and I'm going to talk about it later. So basically, it so basically this is the strategy. This is this is a, a strategy that we uh, that we implement to make organize uh, to make uh, any information that we gather from our uh, from from our environment to be more organized and understandable. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Fiske and Taylor, yes, Susan Fiske is a very prominent uh, social cognition uh, scientist. She is quite well known in this uh, in this topic, and she defined uh, she defines uh, social schema as a cognitive structure. Yeah, because it's the simplest or the the smallest structure in our cognitive uh, processes that serves as a as a function of organizing information. And it contains attributes, and not only attributes, but also the relation between those attributes. And I'm going to talk about it later. And when the schema is activated, when we use the schema, yeah, uh, it works uh, as a theory-driven, yeah, or concept-driven uh, information processing. So we're trying to perceive or uh, form a perception about our social world according to our schema, yeah. So it provides us with information. Which makes uh, which makes our social world more interpretable. Yeah, so we interpret our social world by using information that we keep inside our schema. And so basically, schema would be a pattern of thoughts or behavior or responses. Yeah, that we organized in that that are organized in our mental structure. And it's also a mental framework that we that contains on specific themes. And it would help us greatly by uh, it would help us greatly in information processing process uh, by organizing those information by making sense uh, by, by making sense of those informations. So it makes uh, it it makes it it makes us easier when we uh, when we need it. So when we try to recall those information, yeah, as the basis uh, as a basis to make judgment or to to form perception about social work, then it. It, it would be easier for us, yeah. So uh, imagine uh, the stuffs that uh, that 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 scattered around your room. Now, if it is messy and you won't categorize and you don't categorize those stuffs properly, when you need a clothes, yeah, for example, if you need a dress, for example, then if you don't uh, usually put all your clothes inside your cupboard. Maybe you put it, I don't know, inside the bathroom or something. Then it would be easy. It would be extremely hard for you to to find uh, those things that you need. Yeah, if you don't categorize uh, those things properly. And interestingly, social schema tend to be permanent. I would I wouldn't say permanent, but tend to be persisted. Yeah, tend to tend to persist uh, over a course over a course of a, a quite long time. Uh, even though we are faced in different situations, but uh, when you uh, when you ask me whether it is possible for schema to change, it is also possible, and I'm going to discuss that uh, at the end of this uh, meeting. Yeah. So what are schemas yeah, that are available in our cognitive processes? So the first schema that exists, uh, the, the first schema that we're talk uh, that we're talking about is person schema. Which means that it's a box, it's a container box that consists of information about a person. So when 
uh, when you want to keep any information about me, for example, Bu Amel, for example, then you will keep those information inside the person schema, which means those information would greatly help you when you're trying to, when we're uh, interacting with each other. Yeah, it gives you information how you should interact, uh, how you should behave, how you should respond to my behavior or to my, uh, yeah, to my behavior, for example. Yeah, but. Uh, inside those person schema, yeah, schemas, uh, there are also uh, several other. In, uh, beside this, there are also many, uh, many others, uh, many types of of social schema. Yeah, the next one would be role schema. So it uh, rather than uh, saving or keeping information about the person, those schemas would contain uh, lots of information about role. Yeah, about your about uh, about your role. So you would use information from student box, yeah, to give you information how to behave as a student, yeah. But then, if you are in the context of uh, in, co in the context of family situation, for example, then you would play your role as a as a as a child, yeah, to your parents. Then uh, the schemas about being a good child, for example. It would give you uh, meaningful information, helpful information, how to regulate your social interaction with your parents. Yeah, or perhaps if uh, you, if you're, if you're, in, uh, if you're having a relationship with a person, for example, as a, as as a, uh, as a lover, for example, then you would uh, put, uh, then you would use, um, you would use, uh, um, meaningful information from being a girlfriend or boyfriend schemas yeah to make sure that it to regulate your interaction with your girlfriend or your or your boyfriend so it not, it's not about a person but it is about how you behave in a certain situation yes yeah, so, so so basically it's a role schema and there is there is also scripts yeah it contains uh, information about specific situation for example when you have scripts about classroom for example then uh, those uh, schemas or those box would contain many information about how to behave in a classroom yeah but then if you have a box yeah a script box that contains how to behave in a mosque for example then it will tell you how uh, to properly behave in a mosque when you are praying for example yeah so it contains uh, how uh, the, a lot of regulation or attributes about certain contexts or social contexts that you are in yeah and the next schema would be self schema yeah and these schemas would tell you about yourself so that it so you you would keep uh, any information about yourself in this concept uh, in this box yeah in the in this box named uh, self schema yeah so it basically contains how uh, you perceive yourself how would you see yourself as a person yeah what uh, what you like what you dislike and uh, who you really are, what your aspiration, what your dreams, what you don't like, what you what, what you dislike, and stuff like that. And we're going to learn about the self concept later in this course. Yeah. And the last part would be content free schema. So it does not contain a very specific attributes such as other schemas that I have explained to you uh, earlier. Uh, so basically, it only uh, contains of uh, the relation between attributes for example it uh, um, and it it also helps uh, individuals to regulate their social interaction with other people so for example here yeah so if someone named Paijo when they like when he likes city yeah then city thinks casino is annoying then if Paijo wants to be liked uh, by city then he has to avoid uh, casino then yeah so it's it's a it's a basically uh, contains rules about social interaction and to guide us to behave in a more ambiguous situation yeah in, in the context free situation yeah and okay so this um, topic would be related would be strongly related to the idea or to the function of social schema as a as a part of uh, categorizing information processes yeah. And we also tend to form stereotypes, yeah, mental stereotypes to um, to define, to describe, to imagine uh, someone that uh, hypothetical individuals, yeah. When we try to describe uh, someone, what 
the, um, that would be yeah that would be the idea so um so basically yes yeah, basically schema would help us it gives us those boxes uh and it would help us to put those information in those boxes and so if we if we want to use uh, those information later then it could be easier for us to recall those information and not only that yeah it provides us with stereotype with uh, with information to form uh, prototypes so for example if i w if i ask you to imagine an american for example then you would try to collect information from your social schema well, from your schema to form the idea of an american yeah and of course uh, forming an idea or imagining an american for example it would have you would rely heavily on your previous experience because of course how we form our, our schema would be uh, would be influenced would be greatly influenced by your previous experience yeah so even though i'm going to, even though i'm asking you to imagine the same thing an american the, the same idea the prototypes yeah the uh, the depiction of an american would be different uh, on you, on each students in the head of each so each students because of course because they have different schemas even though the concept is is actually similar yeah and how we categorize this information uh, to make it easier for us to organize this complex uh, complex information about our social world uh, is by organizing by organ or by organ by organizing them uh, hierarchically uh, hi hierarchically and so we start from a more uh, general uh, category a more general theme then we um, then we uh, uh, go forward to and uh, then we uh, try to um, put more specific information in a more inclusive category so this is the example of of uh, of, of organizing information in a hierarchy way yeah in hierarchical way so we start from a, a very general idea yeah a very generic idea of categorization so here you see european yeah, as a category but then we try to be more specific here because the idea of european you, you could imagine someone from uh from hungary for example or for romania for example yeah or you could also imagine someone from uh from great britain they those people two people are completely different even though they are they belong to the same category as a european yeah so european here serves a very as a very general theme or ge very general concept but then how we uh, structure or categorize this information uh, we try to keep that yeah in a more inclusive way in a more specific themes here we see that uh, european could be distinguished i mean there are uh, british here and also italian here uh, are the members of a very general group named european but then being a british could be also um, there are also subgroups inside the inside the the, the the this 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 category yeah so imagine that we're imagine that i'm saying uh please imagine an indonesian yeah <laughs> then it would be it won't uh, it won't be surprising that you would imagine a completely different person yeah <laughs> because there are lots of uh category that could belong that belongs to indonesian yeah so this is how we categorize information yeah we try to uh, for, uh we put structure in our information and we try to uh organize this information from the more general the more inclusive criteria to more specific and uh exclusive category uh, uh, specific or uh, or exclusive uh category and we when we form uh, prototypes so that uh, so previously we're, we we were talk about we we'll talk about uh, the idea of categorizing information so now we're trying to i'm trying to explain how we form a prototypes how we form how we um uh, how we create the idea or the hypothetical idea of a person yeah so we tend to use concrete information that you experience yourself so when i'm asking you to imagine an american for example then if you have an, that you if you have an experience of meeting an american in your past lives then of course you would use that uh, experience to form an impression yeah so if you ask if, if, if i'm asking you to um 
to imagine an, an African, for example, then you would also use those, inf uh, those information that you keep in your schemas from your past experiences to form the idea of an America or of an African. So, if, for example, if you ask me to imagine an African, then I would uh, use the, uh, then I would uh, imagine Chimamanda Adichie because she is uh, uh, one prominent, is, she is a prominent novelist from, uh, from, from Nigeria that I, that I admire, yeah, that I admire a lot. Then I use uh, her prototype, I used her to form a prototype about an African, yeah, and your and the idea of an African could be different, yeah, uh, on 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 each of you, yeah, because it depends on your experience. And this also would uh, would entice the idea of stereotypes, yeah. So we're going to talk about stereotypes after this, and this is also very interesting because stereotypes could be uh, one topic that uh, that often entices curiosity, yeah of many, many social psychologists. So in the next part, I'm going to talk about stereotypes. So this is the end of the second part of this lecture.